Hello and welcome. My name is Sarah Fries Elsas and I'm going to talk to you about peppered moths here in Denmark. There are two types of peppered moths, a black and a white. Before the 1890s, when the uh, tree bark was light, um, the dark colored moths were seen a lot more easily by the birds. And this is an example of light bark. However, industrialized parts of Britain became polluted and contaminated in the 1890s. Um, smoke blackened the tree's bark. This is an example of dark bark. The light-colored moths became a lot easier to see for the birds since they couldn't hide in camouflage on the black trees like the black ones could. So most of them were eaten by birds. Then the much rarer and dark-colored moths that were normally way easier to find on the light bark became more and more common since they were now camouflage on the blackened bark. Therefore, the number of black-colored moths increased as the number of light moths decreased. And that's an example of natural selection that caused a change in the British moth population. But now as the pollution levels are lowering, the amounts of white trees are growing and is followed by an increasing number of light moths. The dark moths are still quite well adapted camouflage-wise, but now that the trees are going back to normal, the dark moths are most likely going to decrease in numbers again because they are now going to be seen easily on the light bark. We are already expecting that by 2019, only 1% of the moth population is going to be dark moths in Britain. Because now that the smoke isn't blackening the trees at bark, white moths are better camouflaged against the trees than black moths are. Although this seems to be a good story about evolution and how organisms evolve, the experiments testing the peppered moths have been known to be a bit flawed. Bernard Kettlewell, who did most of the studies when it comes to peppered moths, experimented in a way that was too artificial for the results to be 100% true. When Kettlewell captured the moths, he took the moths that were the easiest to find, like the, at the bottom of the tree trunks. Most moths like to rest high up in the trees, which make the numbers go a bit off, and which makes the result a bit unreliable. Also, when Kettlewell released the moths he had kept, he released them in the wrong way. He released them in the wrong places, in the wrong time of the day, and in wrong numbers. Peppered moths are a good example of a somewhat natural evolution, but we also need to understand that it doesn't show that large-scale evolution can occur. The first studies that were made to learn about peppered moths were flawed, which might have made some people misunderstand the situation slightly. But some of the flaws have now been addressed in more recent studies, which are concluded in this documentary. Thanks for joining us today, and remember to come back next week on Natural Selection.